second, but just quick introductions. So um, I'm Nicole again, I use she, her pronouns. And we are here in Tucson on Autumn and Yaqui lands. And um, today we're gonna be talking about the Migratory Bird Treaty Act again. It's our series, very important. Um, and Erica, who's about to take over here, Erica is an organizer with the Defenders of Wildlife. She's here based in Tucson, and she works to empower constituents across Arizona to engage in meaningful dialogue with their members of Congress regarding conservation-oriented policy. So Erica, you want to take over? Actually, let's do um, some Zoom protocols first since we're going to be trying to do a new thing here. So we've all been on a lot of Zoom calls, but just to walk through a couple of things that are going to be important for today's call. Um, everyone is on mute right now to kind of minimize background noise. But today's talk is intended to be uh, very interactive. So you'll get a chance to uh, speak up a little bit later. Um, so when you're in your kind of Zoom hub here, um, there are a couple features that are important to note. So first is our chat box. So right at the bottom, if you click on chat, it'll bring up a box and you can chat to either Luke, Erica and me privately or you can chat to everyone. So you can put questions in here if you're having any kind of technical issues. Um, maybe just chat Luke and myself and we'll try to help you out. Um, the other important tab is the participants tab. And this is important because at the bottom of the participants tab, once you open it, you'll see a little feature that says raise hand. And so later when we're playing our uh, game, I won't give too much away yet, um, that raise hand feature will become really important. And if you raise your hand either to ask a question or to answer one, that'll actually make a list for me to see and I can unmute you individually um, and you can speak and be heard by everyone. Um, so Luke, did I miss any Zoom features? No, you're good. Great there job. Go. Cool. All right, Eric, I'm going to pass it over to you and feel free to add anything else to your introduction and then kick us off. Sweet. Uh, well, just want to thank Tucson Audubon for giving me the chance to have a cheeky title. I don't care about <laughs> And also a um, little bit of playfulness. We're going to be playing around of Jeopardy. Um, real quickly with Jeopardy, since there are a couple people that have maybe never seen the game show, um, there'll be three different categories, which you'll see in just a little bit. Um, and there'll be kind of a, a number, a dollar amount. It's fake money. I don't have money to give, <laughs> but it kind of represents maybe a strata of difficulty. So, you know, $500 question is obviously going to be more difficult than a $100 question. And the questions are phrased as phrases, not questions. It sounds harder than it is. It's not hard. Um, it's fun. But you answer the question as a question. You'll see how it works. Don't worry. Um, so I'm going to go over a little bit of some moving pieces of the Migratory Bird Treaty Act and the Protection Act um, to kind of give a high level overview and then we'll test your knowledge at the end because I know we're all burnt out on webinars and hearing talking heads so this will make sure everybody's still awake. Um, I also would be interested um, at some point in the chat box if you want to share where you are dialing in from if it's not Arizona, um, just because we are going to get to an advocacy piece about advocating for the Migratory Bird Protection Act. Um, so it'd be cool once we're done to see where folks are in case you happen to be in one, a district that we have, um, we're pushing to get a co-sponsor on the Migratory Bird Protection Act. Um, so I guess before we get started, I just wanted to say why I call it I don't care about birds. Um, I think that, you know, for a lot of us that are organizers or do work, there's a lot of folks I see on this call. I see Harlan, who's with Defend Our Future, and I saw Kelly, who works for Local First Arizona, and some other grasshops um, activists. I think finding intersectionalities in our work and the ways that we can decolonize our work and talk about our work in different ways is really important for conservation right now. Um, I mean, it's definitely you just the concept generally of justice is really exciting for me and a reason that keeps me involved in this work. Because um, the truth is, 
whether you're in Sunrise Movement or Defend Our Future, Defenders of Wildlife, Audubon, whatever it is, we're all kind of usually struggling against like the same five people at the top. So for us to come together um, and find ways to advocate for each other's issues, I think is a really beautiful thing we can do together. So even if you don't care about birds, let's talk about the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. Here we go, cute bird to start. Um, high level overview, this is a really old law, bedrock environmental law, very non-controversial, very bipartisan. Um, it really came about, uh, you know, with illegal, well, it would be now considered illegal feather trade, um, disappearance of the passenger pigeon. It was a, you know, powerful law that essentially I like to think of this law as when you go to sleep at night, you lock your doors. You take some pretty basic measures to ensure your personal safety. The Migratory Bird Treaty Act essentially works the exact same, um, making sure, we'll get into this a little bit later, but that stuff like oil pits are covered. Um, you know, I think that we're at a weird time when these things get cast as very partisan and like job killers and it's gonna ruin the economy and no one can do what they want. And that's just not true. Um, you know, the former director of the Fish and Wildlife Service came out against all of the rollbacks we're going to go over today. Um, this is a very, very non-controversial law. Um, and it's really cool because we're actually not in it alone because birds don't see invisible lines of borders. They fly everywhere. This image is just one that represents all of the birds that are in uh, the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, which is an issue that I work on, look at all the different places they migrate. It's every single continent. Um, so it's a really awesome law that, you know, again, if we are pulling out of it and changing it, that makes it a little bit funky for all of our partners across the world that respect uh, the migration of birds across the globe. So sorry to throw that at you, but that's our reality. Um, Again, this list, I'm not going to read it to you. You guys can read it, but these are just some examples of what the Migratory Bird Treaty Act uh, facilitates. And I think the most important nuance to, to kind of get into the weeds slightly about is that even if there's an accident, like the Deepwater Horizon, that tragic event was an accident, BP still had to own up to that accident and pay massive amounts of fines for what they did, which was you know, the biggest oil spill um, in US history. And it had horrible effects on the communities that were there. Um, obviously, not just birds, but also homo sapiens and the way of life of the fishing and shrimp industry. Um, so, you know, it, it basically, the Migratory Bird Treaty Act incentivizes industry, not just oil and gas. I have some other examples outlined here, power lines, communication towers, et cetera, even wind. Um, to, to mitigate, you know, to mitigate uh, the effects of whatever industry that they are in. Um, and I think it's important because probably everybody on this call knows that we're in the middle of an extinction crisis. Um, we're probably going to do another webinar in a couple months on the very real connection between the extinction crisis, climate change, and the pandemics that we're in. And so protecting biodiversity um, is, has never been more critical. So having these very basic measurements to ensure that um, is pretty important and, again, very base level. Um, I think that we're going to just start getting into, yeah, again, like, why does Trump do all these crazy rollbacks? Like, why would Trump care about birds? This is a little grumpy burling owl asking that question. I literally just chill. Why does Trump care about me? Um, well, you know, you can probably guess this, but because stuff like the Endangered Species Act, NEPA, National Environmental Protection Act, the Migratory Bird Treaty Act, these are measures to keep industry from basically drilling and, you know, fracking and having mines and doing everything wherever they want. These are accountability measures for corporations. So, um, you know, essentially back in 2017, you can see in the text on the left of your screen, uh, the Migratory Bird Treaty Act, again, 100 year old law was reinterpreted by a man named Dan Giorgiani, who worked for Coke Industries. Um, and basically Dan Giorgiani's interpretation was that if 
you didn't mean to kill a bird, you're off the hook. So that's kind of crazy, right? Like if you're in your car and you hit and kill someone on accident, you don't just get away with that. Like accidents happen and that's, that's, that's life, but also like that's a ridiculous excuse to just let someone off the hook for stuff like death or environmental degradation. So, um, you know, bringing you guys up to speed, Fish and Wildlife Service basically was like, you know, should we codify, meaning solidify this interpretation of the law? Um, we pretty much knew, uh, and I mean, we, a coalition of Audubon, Defenders of Wildlife, American Bird Conservancy, National Wildlife Federation, and a couple others, um, we pretty much could see the writing on the wall that this, this law is right now in the process of getting codified, meaning solidified. The Trump administration is absolutely rushing it through in case Trump doesn't get a second term to mean just that. Um, mean that if Deepwater Horizon were to happen tomorrow, BP would be fined absolutely nothing for bird deaths, um, which is incredible. They were fined $100 million for bird deaths in the Deepwater Horizon um, event, and over a million birds were killed in that event. Um, and that's just one statistic of the catastrophic damages. So um, that's pretty disturbing. We really don't think that that makes much sense. And again, this is, I can't stress it enough, a very bipartisan law. Um, Fish and Wildlife Service has always been happy to work with this measure. Um, it also means stuff like when there is an oil spill, they have to clean it up. They are mandated to clean it up. Um, oftentimes, you know, through payments to different local groups, um, restore ecosystems, restore watersheds, restore habitat that was lost, which again has resounding impacts and effects for the communities. Um, you know, oftentimes it's no secret, like all the places that all these oil and gas companies are drilling and fracking and doing, you know, all these different projects, they're in frontline communities. So again, Who's going to bear the brunt first and foremost if we let these corporations off the hook and they spill oil in someone's backyard and there's no laws there to say that they have to clean it up. Um, that's something that we really have to remember through our advocacy is who's going to be impacted by these rollbacks first and foremost. Um, it's really important. So here is the triangle of doom. I've laid it all out for you guys. How is it possible that the fossil fuel industry is um, basically gotten their hands into government and something like this long, uncontroversial standing, long standing uncontroversial law is now going to be codified. Um, on the right, you'll see we've got Fish and Wildlife Service who will determine if this law comes into effect. Um, the next level under that is Department of Interior. Department of Interior answers to Fish and Wildlife Service. Interior might be more familiar to you as they manage our national park systems and BLM lands and national monuments. And who is in charge of the Department of Interior? David Bernhardt, who used to work for Halliburton. Woohoo! This awesome revolving door of fossil fuel lobbyists then taking high level federal positions in our government, making these terrible decisions and getting no checks along the way. Um, the left triangle new interpretation of this long-standing uncontroversial law. Who wrote it? Again, Dan Giorgiani, who has a high-level, high-ranking role in Interior, and he used to work for the Koch brothers. So around and around we go um, in this death spiral. And again, these are familiar names, I'm sure, if you're organizers with other environmental groups, um, Koch Industries, Halliburton, et cetera, this extremely powerful fossil fuel lobby that we are always fighting against. Look at the heart spin. Here it is also in case you needed a picture, a visual of all of these old white dudes that literally look the same, which is hilarious. Um, top left, don't think that dude needs an introduction. The Donald, uh, kind of puppet master of this whole thing. To the right, Koch brothers, they are obviously massively invested in climate misinformation campaigns throughout the world. Bottom left, Secretary of Interior, um, who's a former Halliburton lobbyist, and then we've got the EPA chief as well, who just happens to be a former coal lobbyist, just threw that in there as well. So um, these things matter. So what is the solution? We've pushed back as much as we possibly could against, you know, these horrible modifications to this law. 
Um, we are kind of done running defense on that and we're running offense. So introducing doo -doo -doo -doo, the Migratory Bird Protection Act. Um, this essentially, all it does is it repeals everything that I just told you about, all the bad stuff. And the reason for this political strategy is that um, it takes Congress a lot longer to basically undo all the damage that's currently being done to the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. It's just much faster to push a bill through that restores those protections. Um, so all, I mean, again, it's not, we're not throwing any more, um, any additional conservation measures into the Migratory Bird Protection Act, which is unfortunate because that's the direction we should be moving. Um, but this is our current as a coalition stance is to, again, instead of pushing back against those rollbacks, we've kind of lost that battle. We need to run offense hard and fast right now on this piece of legislation. Um, it does not have a Senate companion bill. It is only in the House of Representatives, but we've got a window that's pretty much now for us to drive co-sponsorship on a bill. And for those that are not familiar, co-sponsorship is just basically um, a, com a commitment from a member of Congress that says, yeah, I co-sponsor this bill. We kind of see it as almost a guaranteed yes vote. Um, it'd be ridiculous for you to sponsor a bill and not vote yes. It just shows broad support for this bill in Congress and also to the public um, and to constituents that this is important. So um, the coalition's goal is around 100 co-sponsors, but we're knocking them off. We've got over 70 co-sponsors across the country. Um, if you're in Arizona, no surprise, Representative Grijalva is signed on to this bill, so is Representative Gallego. Um, Kirkpatrick just got on last week. And then, of course, we're looking to Stanton and O'Halloran, um, if you happen to be in their districts, to uh, sign on to the Migratory Bird Protection Act. And again, if you're in another place in the country, um, it'd be great for you to reach out to your member of Congress to have them support this bill uh, as it moves to the floor for a vote sometime. We don't know. but probably soon. Um, so I'll show this slide again at the end. We're about to move into Jeopardy. Um, but we have set up a phone to action. So um, this is something you can do very simply right now on your phone. Um, you can even do it while we're playing Jeopardy. But if you text MBPA to 52886, you're going to get a prompt back. And it's a very simple petition that's going to go based on your zip code to your elected official, your representative in Congress. And if you are in Kirkpatrick or Grijalva's district, it'd still be great if you did this because it's gonna trigger a thank you message to them. And I don't know if anybody's ever trained like a dog or something, but positive reinforcement is a really great method of training. So as much as in this horrendous political climate, we're always asking our elected officials to do stuff, it's just as important to thank them and say, hey, I noticed that you signed on, Representative Kirkpatrick, as a co-sponsor of this, and that's important to me because it represents my values. And you can do that too if you don't want to just send this text. Um, but this is a really simple thing. Also, share this with your friends. Take a screenshot, share it in any group you're in, um, especially around the country. Uh, we need to get as many co-sponsors on this bill and broad support as we possibly can. So. Um, I'll share that at the end, but let's move into Jeopardy. I don't have a Trebek voice, sorry. I have to give credit um, to this idea to Taiki with Audubon Society and then Derek, who's on my government relations team um, in DC for, and this was not my idea, to make it Jeff Purdy. That was my weird idea, but um, fun. Fun different way of activism. So today's categories, we're going to have three. And if you want to answer a question, again, as um, Nicole and Luke were saying, just use the chat box and one of them will call on you. And then you can pick which category you'd like. We've got corporate accountability, benefits to humans, and the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. So you can pick which one you think you're an expert in. All right, so here's our game board. And whenever you decide, say, I wanna take benefits to humans for 300 um, or whatever it is that you, you wanna do to play the game. Um, yeah, like I said, Nicole or Luke will call you out and then I'll click on it and we'll go through the answer. 
do we have someone who's starting or does someone just get to raise their hand first and start? Yeah, somebody can raise their hand, yeah. Anybody. And so remember if to raise your hand, you click on participants and underneath the list of all the names in the in the group, it'll say invite, unmute me, or raise hand. So who wants to raise their hand first? You just click on that and we'll call on you. Or we could pick a category as well for you. All right, hey. Kevin is gonna go first. Okay, I'm gonna unmute you. All right, Kevin, I'll, you're good to go. Okay, um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, sir. I'll take benefits to humans for 200, please. <laughs> All right, this zoonotic pathogen is carried by the common robin, spreading directly as a result of loss of diversity in birds. I might have phrased that oddly, but basically we're in the middle of a pandemic, pandemic right, with a zoonotic pathogen, the coronavirus. So what zoonotic pathogen, because of loss of biodiversity, has been isolated and is being carried by robins? What is West Nile virus? Yeah! <laughs> Kevin's my partner, so it's kind of unfair. <laughs> hey, yeah, that's cheating. <laughs> no, starting us off strong. Great. Um, all right. right, thanks, Kevin. I'm going to mute you again, but you can play again later if you want. Um, all right, um, some people had raised their hands and then lowered their hands, and I'm afraid you're now intimidated, but... <laughs> Oh. Gonna, oh, here's Colleen. Colleen, I'm going to unmute you. You're good. Oh. Colleen, I don't see your picture, but there, there you are. I see you. Here. Let's do corporate accountability for 300. Ooh. Yeah. Hi, Colleen and Hannah. Hi. Hey. <laughs> this fossil fuel and petroleum product company is the former employer of Dan Giorgiani, author of The M Opinion. Coke. What is? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite um, evil empire, because I'm from Wichita. Awesome. Colleen and Hannah, both. Good job. Wow, I wouldn't have gotten either of those. <laughs> all right like carol, I'm gonna un carol you're next i'm gonna unmute you all right you're good to go oh hang on you're still muted somehow she might have to unmute her, herself if she oh, yeah. muted herself so so carol. carol there you go um, nice. and um corporate accountability for 100 This fossil fuel company employed Secretary of the Interior, David Bernhardt. I'm going to say, what is Halliburton? You guys are killing it! Yeah, you guys are killing it. You're going to get the corruption of the federal government down pat. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see who's coming up next. Kelly. Kelly, I'm going to unmute you. All right, I unmuted you. Okay, I'll take the Migratory Bird Treaty Act for 100. <laughs> Love it. This non-fossil fuel industry also accidentally kills birds. Oops, I read that as a question, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you mentioned a bunch of them. Um, mm -hmm. What is the wind industry? <laughs> Yes! Oh, wow. <laughs> I love it. You win double because I did mention several sad ways that birds also die. <laughs> you guys are amazing. I'm impressed. <laughs> yeah. And I would say, even if you think you don't know the answers, let's be adventurous because then we'll I learn agree. new things. We'll learn lots of new things. Danielle's up. All right, Danielle, I'm unmuting you. You're unmuted. You're good. Okay, I'll do benefits to humans for 100. <laughs> I don't care about birds. 
prove one way they have any direct tie to my life. I didn't really cover this, so. I don't care about birds. Prove one way they have any direct tie to my life. There are several answers. I'll give you that clue. Okay. What is they prove one way they have any direct tie to my life? This is such a simple, I feel like I'm totally blanking. Um, what is help? Give me a hint. <laughs> Danielle, do you ever like look Joking. out your window and see a bird and like have any feelings about it? Oh, what is they bring me joy? <laughs> That's totally so And happiness. Yay. Control. Intrinsic value, that could be that. Yeah, that's intrinsic value, yeah. Yeah, intrinsic value. Okay. But, um, I did go down the hole a little bit with all the studies people have done on pest control, and it's like in the billions of dollars globally that, um, you know, just birds provide us. Again, biodiversity, all the ecosystem services that they, they give us for free because they're beautiful creatures. Yeah. So you nailed Thank it. Love it. That could be a whole webinar in and of itself. Yep. All right, I'm gonna mute you again, Danielle. And now, let's see, go over to my chat box. Carol, did you wanna go again? Sure. Yay. Um, migratory breed, bird treaty for 200. This bird is protected by the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. I was under the impression that all migratory birds were uh, protected. I'm gonna give it to you. Yes, you could have said, a, well, like millions of them, or not, not millions. A thousand. Okay, so it's who are all the <laughs> migratory birds that migrate? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I will say it's actually not all migratory birds. So oh. in the same way that the Endangered Species Act is regularly updated, the Migratory Bird Treaty Act is also regularly updated, usually by people submitting their request that for, if for some reason they were ignored and then it passes up the chain. So that can be anyone, it could be you, and then you contact, you know, like it can go up the chain of command, be like, hey, why isn't this bird covered? Um, at this point, a lot of them are, and pretty much every species we see in Arizona that migrates is covered, but that list does change. Interesting. Yeah. Thanks, Carol. Thank you, Nicole. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Which one was that? <laughs> I don't even know. That was Migratory Bird Treaty Act 100. I think that we just did, right? Yeah, I think we did, we did one in 200. All right, Danielle's coming back. Uh, well, uh, Catalina can't find oh. the raise hand button, but she was told okay. us through chat that she'd like to go. Okay, let me find you, Catalina. I just saw your face she, a little while ago. She's good to go. Or... Catalina, I think you have to unmute yourself. There you go. Yeah, okay. I don't know there if this go. was like <laughs> players that were set up ahead of time, but... <laughs> no, no, no. It's live. <laughs> okay, perfect. It's live. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know how well I'll do, but I'll do... Um, Let's try benefits to humans for 300. All right. This figure represents the birding and watchable wildlife economy in Arizona alone. Figure like a number figure? Yeah, like how much money does bird watching and watching wildlife and like whatever passive? I don't know. If I might have missed that you said this. Um, I did. I would guess that it's probably in the millions. I'm going to give it to you, even though. Millions. Oh my God. Okay. It doesn't matter. Our president can't spell for us. What is $1.4 billion annually? And actually, I think this is an old figure. Nicole. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it's up at least 20 percent so this information comes from the fish and wildlife service they do a survey unfortunately their last survey which was 2016 um, resulted in some unreliable data so we can't use it to update this figure so we have to wait till this year next year next year when they do it again 
and then we'll be able to update this, this survey. But all numbers point that birding is the fastest form of passive recreation in the United States, fastest growing. So, and there's about a 20% increase. Um, so it's at least 20% higher, but probably more. And this is my favorite lobbying point, but it is one you can make to your members of Congress um, quite easily that, you know, um, birds are part of the economy just through that, even though it might not be something you might not think of initially. All right, here's our next brave soul. Let's get a new person here. Who's, yeah, who's brave? Looks like there's some easy ones left. <laughs> Kathy, I'm going to unmute you. All right, Kathy Cadford. She's smart. <laughs> All right, you should be good at good to Yeah, right. I'll just go for five minutes because I don't know how many answers. So, uh, benefits are. Oh. Break it up, Kathy. I know, I don't know. About that. For five I think it's benefits to humans 500, but Kathy, you're a little bit uh, scratchy. Yeah, uh, Kathy. Corporate. Oh, you want to do what? corporate accountability? Do you want to type in the Can chat box, me? Kathy? Yeah. 500. I think it was corporate yeah. accountability for 500, but Kathy, if you want to chat in the chat box your answer for this, I think that would be work a little bit better. All right. Yeah, sorry about that, Kathy. But yeah, you use the chat box for the answer. Yeah. Okay, BP, British Petroleum, was fined this amount for the one million birds that died during Deepwater Horizon. All right, we'll wait for Kathy or else we'll open it up to everyone. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's got to be at least a dollar bird, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Kathy, if you need a hit, you might be able to ask for help from the crowd in the chat phone box. Phone a friend. Call phone a friend. What's what's your hint, Nicole? You get oh oh here. Two billion. What is one hundred million dollars? Two billion would have been great. <laughs> yeah, two billion would be great. Let's. And how many birds was it? One million birds. Yeah. So ten dollars a bird. Is that right? No, yeah. hundred dollars. Uh, I think. Wait, I think it's hundred. dollars a bird. Don't, don't make me do math on the spot. That's not my strong suit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, we only got a couple of questions left. Where's Janelle? Why isn't she answering? Yeah, asking. <laughs> All right, Janelle, you've been called out. <laughs> You'd have to unmute yourself, though. Uh oh. Sorry. <laughs> away a few times we were having technical difficulties so why don't I do um, corporate accountability for 200 excellent this fossil fuel company was responsible for the deep water oil spill and explosion in 2010 so tell me about uh, British Petroleum. Heck yeah. <laughs> it's British Petroleum. <laughs> that was too easy, Janelle. You're going to have to go again. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I felt so brave just then. <laughs> well, you got this. Yeah. Ooh, Rosie raised. All right, Rosie, I'm going to unmute you. All right, Rosie, you should be good. Can you hear me now? Yay! Yay! Hello! Can Hi. I do corporate accountability for 400? Popular category. Yeah. <laughs> if Deepwater Horizon were to occur tomorrow under the new interpretation of the Migratory Bird Treaty Act, how much would BP be fined for bird death? What is zero dollars? Boom! <laughs> <laughs> It's a sad thing to celebrate. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Money for ecosystem um, improvements or habitat restoration projects. Super fun times. Mm. Wow. Thank you, Rosie. All right. Only a couple more. OK, 
Carol's coming back again. <laughs> I'm gonna unmute you again. I think you're gonna have to do it yourself though. Okay, there. Um, I'll have uh, benefits to humans for 400. Love it. After Deepwater Horizon and Exxon Valdez, fines for the MBTA resulted in this community benefit. I kind of just said it. I'm feeling stupid because I didn't listen well enough to remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, ooh. Uh, I don't better water for people. No, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know. No, it's all right. What is mandatory restoration and oil spill cleanup? Oh, yeah. Yep, so <laughs> spill oil. They have to clean it up and they have to restore the ecosystems to the community around the community. Clean water definitely being one of those. Yeah, it's not like you need that or anything. <laughs> Thanks, Carol. Four Colleen. more questions. Colleen, I'm gonna unmute you. All right, you should be good. Okay. Colleen won't do it, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> Migratory, migratory for 400. All right. 90% of incidental meaning accident and take meaning death violations were issued for not doing this. So basically, how did 90% of birds die accidentally because somebody didn't do blank? So it's kind of tough, but. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of anything. You have to press the button, the wrong button. Yeah, you have to press the sound. Eh. I don't know if I can. I don't know if you heard that, but it boos. It comes out of your computer. Yeah. Oil waste pits and tanks. Um, it's like millions of birds, you know, I don't remember what the number is, but yeah, we'll fly and land in oil, oil waste pits because they think it's water. It's a really dumb thing that's very easy to prevent. Just cover it. Um, so there you yep. go. All right, two more, oh, three more. All right, Danielle's coming back. I'll do uh, Migratory Bird Tree Act for 300. All right, Danielle. This country is part of the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. Yes, I saw this one earlier and I wanted this one. So <laughs> what is Canada, the US, Mexico, Japan, and Russia? Is oh that my God. Oh my God. Wow, that's extra credit. <laughs> yeah. You are hired. Thank you so much. No. Amazing. <laughs> Look at that. Someone's paying attention. No kidding. <laughs> okay. Two more. Two more. Can we get two new people? Two brave new people? I can call on people too. <laughs> yeah, you should do that. <laughs> or Nicole, do you know Nicole, do you know all these answers? Oh, I have no idea. No, they're you hard. Want. They're probably hard. It's just a different way to learn. Don't be embarrassed if you don't know. It's that's this is a this is a safe learning space for all. It's okay. <laughs> Calling on me in school definitely traumatized me a little bit. <laughs> all right. Well, maybe we can take the last two, Erica. And well, you wrote them. That's not fair. I wrote them. Let's make yeah. Luke do it too. <laughs> okay, Luke, you pick one, and then I'll do. Oh, one. You can go first. Uh, I'll do uh, Migratory Bird Treaty Act for five hundred. All right. See if the Audubon people can get it. <laughs> How the number percentage wise birds have declined in North America since 1970. I also did not explicitly say this figure. Ah, uh, shoot. How much? It did go out in one of my staff update emails though. Yeah, it's probably been on there. How much? Uh, let's say, I don't know, 50%. OMG, the person that works for Audubon? 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 30%. Oh, I'm killing it, Luke. That's why I stayed on to watch this. I need to learn. Exactly. 30%. 30%. I knew I was too high. Sad day. All, All right. right, we've got one more. Let's do it. We can do it as a group. First person to write the answer in the chat box wins. All right. Benefits to humans for 500. This industry, this is actually a really hard question that I definitely did not say. This industry directly benefits from the restoration mandates of the MBTA. So let's say there's an oil spill, something bad happens, they restore habitat. This is an industry that should be totally advocating for this, but isn't always thinking about it in this context. Okay, we're getting a lot of good answers coming in. So I'm gonna let people answer and then I wanna see. Yeah, right, we have fishing, fishermen, outdoor recreation, tourism and rec, outdoor rec. Oh yeah, what is very important. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah. All right, what's the answer? Don yeah, hunting and fishing. Yep. Yeah. Oh, Whoever sure. answered that. What is yeah. Don detergent on oh, Carol? That's hilarious. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, thanks for playing, everyone. Um, you are all winners. And now, oh God, how do I get to the very end? <laughs> oh no, maybe actually what I'll do is go back. Let's do the slide before. So you, you could also close out if you wanted. Right, this go. There we go. There we go. So um, yeah, next step is to just do this action. If everybody's doing it right now, you would make my day. <laughs> and birds don't have opposing thumbs, so like they can't text. <laughs> also a problem. And I'll send this out in our follow-up email to people. So Perfect. if you're not right next to your phone right now, Perfect. that's fine. Well, that's it. I'll stop sharing my screen if it's all, everybody saw it. Look at each other. Yeah, thank you, Erica. All right, and I just want to end on this was a free to fly webinar. So and I know we have a, a lot of new faces on this. So if you have not seen Tucson Audubon's project yet, it's called Virtual Flyway, um, free to fly virtual flyway. And it's our little initiative um, to tell the story of migratory birds in Arizona. So this is particularly pertinent to this topic. I don't care about birds because we all come from very different backgrounds and we're gonna care about different things, but we need to help tell the story of why birds are important to the state. And we're all gonna have a different story as to what that is, right? Could be as simple as looking out our windows and spotting a bird and having one of those magical morning moments um, to like a really advanced birding expedition where you saw your life bird those are all great. And so um, you can actually go onto our website. Maybe I'll pull that up so people can see it. Um, and uh, share. Hmm. Are you not able to share your screen? I don't know. Let's see. Here we go. Should be good. Yeah, no, I think it's one of my computer settings. So share. All right. Can everyone see that? There we go. Cool. So let me move this out of my way. So when you're on just our regular website, you've already gone to a different page. You've got too many tabs open. The easiest way I've been showing people to get to it is just to scroll down on our homepage. Right here, free to fly. And what we're having people do is actually tell your story of your favorite migratory bird. And we're gonna compile them into a virtual flyway and I'm gonna be able to use it just as one example when I go talk to our decision makers and be like, look at all these people that care about this specific bird. I'm gonna have this beautiful, beautiful virtual flyway to illustrate each, every one of the, the migratory birds that come through Arizona. Um, so I've walked through this with a lot of people before, but down here at the bottom is how you actually submit something. 
Um, and we went over the migratory birds that come to Arizona. Here's where you can actually see the 320 species um, that we regularly see here in Arizona. So a quick introduction to that and then tune in to future fleet of free to fly webinars. We're going to have a bunch more. Um, the next one is going to be in July and really focus on that Migratory Bird Protection Act that Erica gave us a little teaser to. And then Erica will be coming back again to talk about that pandemics topic we mentioned before. But there are many more that are going to happen in between, so stay tuned. All right, we like to end with questions. So do people, does it, did we mention something that you didn't understand? <laughs> we can now address, so I'm going to stop sharing. So everyone can see everyone's faces again. Feel free to raise your hand or just unmute yourself. We'll put it in the chat box. Um, I can answer Danielle's question about who is has co-sponsored the um, Territory Bird Protection Act. So it should be on congress.gov, but that is not always updated as regularly as we would like it to be. Um, so for example, I'm not even sure if Kirkpatrick's on there yet. Um, but if you do have a specific question, you can ask either Nicole or I, and we have quicker access to that info through the coalition about who is actually on the bill. Great question, Danielle. Cool. Well, thanks everyone for coming. You can contact us at any time with additional questions. How about that? That sounds like a good plan. All right. Thanks everyone for coming today. I'm going to unmute everyone in case they want to just hang out and chat. Oh, I but did. You did. Okay, cool. I did. Thanks. <laughs> Erica, that was wonderful. Awesome. And fun. Good. <laughs> Thanks, Erica. Thanks. Thanks, Thank Audubon. You. It was a good time. Yeah, that was <laughs> Thank awesome. you. Yeah. Now we have things to do that are effective. I'm going to actually put this on my Facebook page and yes. uh, uh, and maybe uh, even email some people with it. So There we go. That Thanks, brings, Erica. Uh, that brings up a great question. I have one more. Mm. Um, which is, is there some standard language, like a paragraph you could send to us that we can then pass out to everyone? Yeah, actually in the chat, I shared our petition. So, okay. um, and that's one that's like the coalition. So Defenders Audubon, it's, you know, the same, like you could use anything in that paragraph, but I think, I think actually that's a great question because using your own language, I think, and even just the intrinsic value um, is not probably leveraged, <laughs> you know, like just that's your own reasons are just as important as the ones we laid out today. Um, I just wanted to get the terminology right. <laughs> I think of you of all people, probably I'm not worried. You're not uh, an encyclopedia for the, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that was wonderful. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Feel free Great. to either of us. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.